pour le salon là, mais non. Good morning, everybody. Perfecto, perfecto. Hola, hola. Perfecto. Hola, hola, hola. Moi, je vais commencer en, je vais commencer en français pour vous dire bonjour. C'est donc la, la conférence de presse de Relatos Salvajes. This is the press conference for Wild Tales, Relatos Salvajes. I'd like to remind you of the fact that you have to switch off your mobile phones and introduce yourself when you ask questions. There will be uh, hostesses handing around the microphones in the room. I should introduce myself before I present them. They're much more better known than I. On my left, Hugo Sigman, who's the producer from Argentina. On the opposite side, Agustin Almodovar, a Spanish producer. And then, in order, Maria Marul, who you saw on a plane, I think. Oscar Martinez, Oscar Martinez. Qui, je, je pas I don't want to talk uh, money too much uh, with him. An actor explosive. A fabulous actor, Ricardo an explosive Darin. rather actor, Ricardo Darín. Avec lequel je me the si director, cette va pas à un moment and I wonder autre, whether this Damien press Cifron. conference won't degenerate at a given point in time, given the film, uh, Damien Sifron. In parfaite, Erika Rivas. Erika Rivas, uh, the perfect bride. Et qui est de Someone très bon who un has bon a very non? warm Et heart. He's a good guy. Leonardo Not all the time, bien. but... Uh, I'm referring, of course, um, to Leonardo Sparaglia. We have three other producers who are here. Pedro Almodovar, um, Matthias Mosterin, Daniel Seques. I'll ask the first question, perhaps, to get the ball rolling. Wild Tales. Sorry, I can't hear the translation anymore. The uh, headset seems to have uh, gone off. Okay. You have to put it on uh, backwards. No, 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 para nada. Disculpen. Sobre todo que le voy a hablar en español. Well, particularly as I'm going to speak in Spanish. On va voir quoi ils vont lui traduire maintenant. So you won't probably need the translation. So my question is very simple. Estos relatos salvajes. These wild tales comprise six episodes. Were there six at the outset? In fact, there were 12 or 14 that we wrote, and more were sort of in the pipeline. We brought together these tales that you see in the film, and that's what gave rise to the title, Wild Tales. Other tales weren't quite as wild. There were some uh, offenses in other scenes. There was one uh, love story, but they were less wild. Can I ask you how you put these together? How did you choose the order in which you see the various tales? It was a process which uh, continued, in fact, uh, during the shooting and during the editing. We hit on the final order sort of towards the end, and it hinged on the energy you see in the film. It was quite a challenge. It was quite a project to turn all these tales into a single cinematographic experience. It was like a roller coaster, an emotional roller coaster. So the order had to be feasible. 
este fue el, el que para mí más For me, y, y, that y más justicia, was a major hace, challenge, and it had to be very well done and worked out because it had to reflect what I'm really trying to say. And did you have to look for sort of tricks to bring these tales together? No. I think, well, I fully respect imagination and the natural side and pace of imagination. I don't like to add or subtract things from sort of natural scenes that develop in a natural way. What about the link between the tales? Well, the truth of the matter is that I had great pleasure with this film. I like big things that contain little things. I like uh, uh, collections of short stories. I like uh, lots of different episodes that are brought together. And that uh, lay at the base of this uh, project. I wanted to be faithful to this uh, general idea. Idea. So the tales are not uh, linked. I'm not trying to create an arbitrary link, and I didn't want to have characters that uh, went from one tale into another. I didn't want to add that kind of thing to the film. I just wanted to film things as they were. That's how it is. I have a question for Damian. Thank you very much for your film. It uh, was a wonderful film to see in Cannes. It's a very light film. And what was your frame of mind when you made the film? Did you want to reflect the state of Argentina? Well, OK, how did I feel? I'm I'm just fine. I am a pretty much of a normal person. Okay, subject to certain reservations, perhaps. Uh, no, I didn't want to create a world that uh, uh, was totally mad and crazy. I am a film director, and I can. I like to write about things that bother me, that attract my uh, attention. If I didn't have this medium for expressing myself, maybe I wouldn't feel so happy and good. I don't, no, I didn't want to depict, for example, extreme poverty or a given situation in the country. No, I don't want to be, I'll never be a sort of a docile being. I always want to change things, react. Uh, I can't uh, make films every day of the year, but I obviously react to events I see around me. I wanted to write on these given topics that you can see in the film. What I say to myself is, OK, uh, this is my subject matter. There's a second part to the question. What about Argentina? Well, how is Argentina today? What's it like? In a nutshell, is there a link uh, with uh, Argentina and the state of the country today? Are you trying to reflect the state of the country at present? No, no, I wouldn't limit the film by saying it reflects the current status of Argentina. It's a, a country with certain problems. Uh, uh, that's typical of countries uh, around the world. What I want to depict is something very humanistic. I like people. I like music and creation. I have great admiration and faith in the human species, which I think can evolve. That's uh, what we've been doing ever since we appeared on Earth. We are highly evolved, and we have tremendous potential to evolve more. I think that this system, this society, the Western capitalist world in particular, well, of course, uh, in the film, 
you don't see other kinds of systems, but uh, I'm 38 years old and I've been uh, living in this system for that period of time. And I think we distort a great deal the true nature of man. A dog uh, which is poorly fed and stuck uh, in a cage, for example, was a bit like us. We're constantly overwhelmed by ads, uh, by pressure, and we're a bit like a, a dog who goes crazy. The dog, uh, or we rather, aren't living in our natural and uh, normal context. And human beings, okay, in some of the episodes, uh, there may be references to Freud, but uh, we are just supposed to be loving beings. We are supposed to be happy, yet at the same time, we are aggressive, uh, perverse to a degree. And this is influenced uh, not only by context. When it comes to society per se, I think uh, the society in which we live comprises a huge number of very poor people. And they are there just to produce, to extract raw materials, to do manual work, to remove uh, rubbish. This is uh, work we don't want to do. And then there are a lot of people who are brought up just to be consumers in consumer society. People who have work, we think they're much better than the others, but they're not all that much better. Uh, of course, I very much enjoy living in today's society, but uh, we, you can see all these people who work in offices, who put on a suit every morning and who have suffer from tremendous pressure, who have mobile phones. Uh, they uh, are constantly are subjected to these ads, encouraged to buy this or that, which they may or may or not need. And I think that people live uh, very stressed lives. I'm talking an awful lot. Are people trying to say to me that I'm speaking uh, for too long? No, no, not at all. Maybe you need to make a second version of Wild Tales. <laughs> Peter von Hood, the German TV. I have a question for Damian Sifron. With these tales, it seems you wanted to go into the very depths of a given situation. You depict things that sometimes people think of but never do. How did you develop that idea? That's absolutely right what you have said. I like to get right down to the bottom of each conflict. I don't want to tell you about uh, the end, but we have the Erica's tale. It was a very dark, negative ending. You have the bride in a terrible state. And that gave rise uh, to a comment. Someone said, well, that ending was rather sad. There seemed to be some kind of a possibility for these characters to evolve on the strength of what had happened. And then I thought, well, and then I started to work with Erica and the other actors, and I said to them, well, who are these characters? Why do they do what they do? And I started to understand even the bride better, and I realized uh, that uh, she wasn't betraying the relationship, a relationship that was intrinsically valuable. They, there was something fake. She wasn't deeply in love. And he wasn't deeply in love with the girl that he married. So I explored this idea. I went into it in tremendous depth. And I thought, well, no, this is not the end of the matter. What's going to happen? You see the ambulance. What's going to be the ending? And then, in my view, something happens, and the feelings change. 
Digamos, entonces, eh, Therefore, digamos, el ir a fondo en ese caso I would hizo say que la película tuviera un final que para the, mí expresa más. Eh, lo, lo que la película está more. It says lo, 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 more than what you digamos, uh, visitando, see as the eh, tales uh, unfold. Que de detrás de lo salvaje, de los, Behind de los, de los these wildness, this primitive problemas. behavior, you have this possibility to evolve. And you can't repress your feelings all the time. That takes so much effort. For example, normally you don't go down into the street to fight, but uh, people may feel like doing it, and sometimes people just explode. For example, uh, sometimes people to dry, try to drive really, really fast. People feel like killing somebody else, and uh, you think, oh boy, these uh, people are really incredible, but you watch this on in the screen. You watch these characters, and you think it's amazing. They do things that I would never dare to do. Sometimes I feel I need to slow down the tempo in some of my uh, scenes. So, basically, I think that this film, and I'd like to go back to your question, I wouldn't say it's a sort of a fresco, a very realistic depiction of uh, Latin American or Argentinian society today, but I do believe it's a, a, a given vision of feelings and emotions which uh, lead uh, to the current reality and shape it. Yo hablo mucho primero. para evitar eh, ya, las ya preguntas yo, agresivas, ¿entendés? Yo, 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 hablo como cuando veo una... Por favor. Fabián W. Guante, de la revista Vanidades para Estados Unidos y Latinoamérica. Mi pregunta es para Ricardo. I have a question si to ask Ricardo. algún relato salvaje de la realidad, por ejemplo, si... We have these tuvo, wild uh, tales... Algo, si perdió la paciencia con algún periodista. What would happen si if you lose patience si with a given uh, no, no, a journalist, for example? Si alguna vez tuvo un, un relato Did you, trabajo, o in these wild tales, uh, is there any reflection of your experience? Did you ever feel like no, reacting, no, no, uh, like in the film? <laughs> Yes, no doubt. We've all found ourselves uh, in these kinds of situations where uh, we want uh, to know how far we may or may not go. But no, I don't think I would ever really react in that manner. Hola, ¿qué tal? Buenos días. Soy María Guerra de la Cadena. María Agreda. Eh, I'd like to congratulate you on this film. It was very amusing, but it was quite worrying as well, not just in Argentina, but also in Spain. We have a very tense social situation, and recently very violent things have happened in Spain. Are you worried about uh, what the politicians may think? What will President and Kishner think uh, when she sees this film? Well, if politicians do their work properly, I'm sure there would be different films. We wouldn't have such an aggressive uh, world where you see so many situations like this. I think uh, politicians need to have uh, grander ideas that they then implement so that people can live in greater harmony. The trouble is there isn't a proper distribution of wealth, and that's not the only problem. The issue for me is that people need to be able to live the lives they want to live. There needs to be education. There needs to be better education. That also is part of the problem. Of course, people say, well, it's the fault of politicians. No, it's not just a question of politicians. They don't have all that much power. But with the power they do have, they could uh, do more and better. Of course, I am concerned with the current state of the world. I think in Argentina we could live uh, much better than we currently do. I'd like to congratulate you. Tell us about uh, the process. How did you come to be selected for the official section. It's very rare to have a comedy in the official selection. 
I don't know whether things can be explained, really. We presented the film some time ago to the festival, and we got a very positive response, even from this official selection. I think you'll have to ask the organizers this question. Ask them why they included us in the official selection. Of course, we were absolutely thrilled. We were very pleased indeed. I don't know uh, uh, what the actual process was which led to our film being selected. I think the film is a very good one, and that's why it has been selected. And that's why we are competing together with other major films. For us, it's a true blessing. I think it will mean that the film is seen around the world. A lot of people will take an interest in the film. It's very complicated for a film to travel. It's a wonderful opportunity for us uh, to get people to hear about the film. And we feel that we're very fortunate indeed. OK, perhaps you will also become better known as a, a producer. Of course, you are open to producing films by other directors, too. How did you come to work on this film? Of course, we have seen a number of his other films, like on probation, for example. He's very talented. And we started uh, talking together, discussing matters together, sending messages, and we waited a bit, and then uh, Damien presented this project, which we thought was going to be a very good one. We do think that it is a, a wonderful uh, film. The script, uh, the screenplay is excellent. It's a very powerful film. And I think uh, we have reached uh, a wonderful result. All the people involved have uh, played a fabulous part. Of course, uh, the director plays a very important part, but also the producers. The producers uh, uh, deal with the budget, uh, and we got tremendous support. And I'd like to thank the producers very much. I would like to ask Damien and to Hugo. When I watched the film, question to Damien and Hugo. I had the feeling when I watched the film that uh, you keep going further and further. I got the impression that the characters would never go that far, but people kept going further and further. What was it like as a producer to uh, work on this? What about uh, for Hugo? How did you manage to handle this screenplay, this feeling? How did the, uh, ver this quite complicated film actually evolve? Well, I think that in, uh, we're talking about people who love the cinema, and we want to, to use all the means at our disposal to produce this kind of a film. Normally, well, we had access. If, we had, if you could read someone's mind, you could make incredible films every day. But uh, the subjective stance of a given individual is quite marvelous. There are all sorts of uh, fictitious situations. There are all sorts of amazing scenes that you can depict in a film. In this uh, respect, uh, we wanted to have this reflected in the screenplay, and I provided my full support. I had absolutely no fears. Of course, what I would like to say is that certain things were very uh, expensive in the film. Of course, there are certain things that we simply couldn't do because of the cost. But normally speaking, 
a este nivel de catarsis, digamos, y la, y la película It's hard to reach a, a full degree of catharsis, but in the film you do see this final catharsis in almost all of the scenes, in almost all of the tales. Yes, of course, I, I am not only a writer, but perhaps a psychiatrist, so this, these are all topics that are really quite familiar. I would like to link your question to another one uh, that was put earlier on. I don't think this film reflects the situation in Argentina. I think this film reflects a kind of universal reality. I think that human beings, when uh, they come under such uh, stress and tension and are subject to abuses of authorities and constant inequality, I think there, at a given point in time they can't put up with it anymore and they react. And I think this film doesn't depict prototypes, but real situations that could actually arise. Aspirations, the human beings can turn violent. And it's not a question of a model. They are just the situations which are depicted in the film. And you can see how people react to these abuses, to these situations where they find they simply can't put up with it anymore. When, uh, therefore, uh, we selected these tales, we felt it did reflect this uh, reality, and we uh, shared our views. Damien uh, depicts things in a very aesthetic way. You have this group of actors and actresses who are quite outstanding. They're exceptional beings, and so this format uh, was wonderful. I had a fabulous cast, and we were able, all together, thanks to Damien, Damian's creativity, we were able to come up with this uh, very successful uh, film. <laughs> what about uh, proposing some kind of therapy? No, you wouldn't pr propose what is depicted in the film, no doubt. I don't. No, no creo. No. La presidenta. Argentinians uh, may say I'm this or that, but uh, quite frankly, the president loves going to the cinema. So I'm not afraid that she'll say she doesn't like it. She loves the cinema, and she uh, knows the director, Damian, and I don't think she'll be upset. I think the film depicts a given reality. I truly don't think that uh, we depict the Argentinian situation particularly, but it's a universal situation. This is something that uh, is true of the entire world. It's a sort of a universal context that you see in the film. So I don't believe that uh, she uh, will be upset by the film in any way. Uh, Helen, uh, from Uzbekistan, Saraton TV. Wow. Central Asia. We are also there, very, very wild. <laughs> and today, after this fairy tale, <laughs> I want to say that uh, I kind of lost all my fear of violence after that film. I laughed so much on violence, and so it's not fearful anymore. Thank you very much for that, really. <laughs> and I want to thank the whole team, because I think it's a work uh, of the ensemble that we have seen, and I really, really appreciate actors. And they all understood uh, very uh, specifically what the director asked them. And this genre that you created, Wild Tales, is maybe uh, that everyone had to capture in their acting. So my question is to actors, to anyone who wants to reply, how much of the improvisation you had been given and able to produce on, on this work with Damian, or it was all <laughs> prescribed from the beginning to the end. And if there were some interesting impact of actors, can you please um, say a little bit about that? Bueno, ¿quién empieza? Okay, do you want to start? Everything was written. Everything was written, at least in the tale where I appear, there was no scope for improvisation. Damien works in a very precise, uh, perfectionist, uh, obsessive way. He thinks about uh, everything before uh, the actor even says uh, a word. Everything is worked out. No, 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 no. 
Pero lo cierto es que the truth of the matter is that in almost all the tales we followed the screenplay word for word, and that uh, matched exactly what Damien had in mind. Y adentro de su panza está nuestra futura hija. Es posible que hable de cosas que ya son de la vida privada. We'll talk matters over in private afterwards. I agree with Oscar in terms of my character. Damian was very, very precise. He knew exactly what tone he wanted for each sentence. He's not a director who works on the basis of improvisation. Sometimes you talk matters over, but when the actual shooting takes place, everything has been carefully worked out. He's very rigorous. We abide by what's written down. And we know exactly what he wants. So that's how we worked on the film. Erica, Leonardo, could you uh, move away from the written text or not? I'd like to say just one thing. There was one improvised sentence. When there's this first uh, confrontation, he said, well, oh, this is crazy, this is mad, when he's looking in the rear view mirror. And he says, oh, my God. But the actors aren't forced into something. The film has nothing to do with the film as I originally imagined it. It evolved. It acquired greater volume, greater substance while it was being shot. The acting is something I love. I like, uh, uh, I think of uh, the characters. I write uh, the characters, and then they actually take shape thanks to the acting. It would be very arrogant to say, uh, no, let's throw out the screenplay, uh, do things differently. No, the work is done with uh, a heart and with passion. I love working with the actors because they give life to something that's just on paper. And they make things very intense. Yes, absolutely. Of course, the work was very precise. Damian is a very precise director. He knows each word, where each comma lies. Despite this precision, he's very open to things that may happen. Different uh, tones of voice, for example, inflections. This, with all the best uh, directors, they have uh, been thinking about their film for, say, two or three years. They're rather like an orchestra conductor. They think of each detail, each uh, fine point. And then you start uh, to move around, to swim around within the orchestra. You have to work things out and see what happens during the action as the bodies move. My tale, well, there, there was a lot of bodily improvisation, if you like, improvisation in terms of gestures and bodily movements. And there, there was a, a lot of scope. Yes, um, it's a very demanding work. It took us days and days of working on those car scenes. And uh, Erica? Well, I'd already worked with uh, Damian, and I pretty much knew about how he went about uh, directing. I studied the script uh, very carefully. I was uh, absolutely prepared to do exactly what he asked me to do. Okay, I, I also tried to imagine what it felt like to be that bride. Uh, mm, I thought about uh, how I should go about acting the part. But Damian has uh, such fabulous imagination that uh, for me, I decided just to be totally available, do exactly as he wished, uh, follow exactly uh, the ideas he had uh, in mind. 
Pero fue muy... And si no, no había ninguna improvisación. There was no improvisation, in other words. We had this dialogue with the spectator as well. Damien knew exactly what kind of feeling he wanted to trigger in the spectator at each moment in the film. He wanted the spectator to react exactly as he wished. I am Virginia Bodak. I represent a, a Romanian entity. Congratulations, Mr. Sifon. I didn't feel, I hadn't felt uh, such a, a feeling of freshness since one of the first Almodovar films. You have this tremendous ability to provide this fresh look, create this novel look. And uh, as of this edition of Cannes, I think you are most likely, and I'm saying this for your mother and your parents, but very sincerely, I, quite frankly, I think you may become one of the greatest directors. Directors in the world. We know very little about you, and this is my sincere opinion. You can ask three questions if you like. First question. It's a double question. We know very little about you. Where does your family come from? The name is so strange. We know that in Argentina, things are very complicated. Families have complicated origins. Where does your family come from originally? <laughs> and how did you come to the cinema? How were you able to become this totally explosive uh, director? <laughs> thank you, thank you very much indeed for these very moving comments. As to the first question, well, this uh, uh, film could have been called uh, People on the Verge uh, of uh, a Nervous Breakdown. Okay, I very much identify with Almodovar as a director. I, I, I love uh, the cinema, I love those kinds of films, and these are films that have no doubt influenced me. These are films that uh, made a mark. Of course, so their references were to very daily scenes, of very commonplace things. I was talking with someone, and we were saying that a lot of uh, directors talk about their origins, where they come from. Well, my uh, home is the cinema. I have always thought about films and filmmaking throughout my life. Uh, I, there are characters I love. I feel very deeply linked uh, to the cinema and have always been throughout my existence. That's my relationship. Uh, with uh, the cinema, as you know, like everybody else, we originated elsewhere. Of course, my ancestors, my forebears, on my father's side, came from Poland, and they fled uh, the Second World War. They uh, were interned in a concentration camp. Uh, they jumped out of a, a train. I wanted to make a film about them, in fact. Uh, they were taken prisoners. Okay, so, <laughs> so you may ask me, well, why did you make this film? Because you're talking about all this substance for another film. They were taken prisoners by the Nazis, and uh, they jumped out of the train. They ended up in the snow, uh, totally frozen, then they fled to Italy. And uh, my, they went to Israel, but they couldn't uh, get into the, the boat. So they ended up uh, traveling to Latin America. They started out in Paraguay, but Stressner was there. Uh, so 
What I'm trying to say is that a huge amount of things happened, but they ended up in Argentina, and that's how things have panned out. One day, I'll tell you about my uh, father's tale. He absolutely adored the cinema. He was a real cinema buff, and I think my love of the uh, cinema probably comes from my father. <laughs> Thomas Okoch, El País. I have some questions for Damian. You said that you wouldn't be capable of doing something very solemn. But there's a lot of black humor in your films. Why did you select the title you have for your films? Well, I don't know. I think... Uh, that what uh, I wanted to do was to show how things are. People often uh, are disguised uh, as though they were disguised in their lives. In fact, uh, okay, my, the initial name, well, I explained how it came about, uh, wild things. It is related to certain wild animals that occurred to me uh, in my mind. And that's why I depicted these wild animals at the very beginning of the film. Okay, I did I didn't want to create a, a too black uh, an atmosphere with a huge storm or something, uh, clouds gathering. Yes, I wanted things uh, to be neither insignificant or too solemn. As to solemnity, yes, I think that uh, solemnity hides lies. When there's something too solemn, it means there's something fishy occurring. So I don't think one should be solemn. Uh, one isn't solemn when one's uh, thinking. One isn't solemn when one's going about one's life uh, particularly. So that's what I wanted to show in my film. I didn't want things to look uh, false, artificial, contrived in any way. First of all, there may be tragedy, and then something happens, uh, and everybody lives. I haven't a clue why uh, humor is considered something that isn't serious. I don't understand why people have this uh, problem with comedy. Why can't comedy be quite a, a serious matter at the same time? One very last question. Juan Carlos González, Colombia. You are a doctor by training, Hugo. And what about Ricardo? I think that uh, the film could have taken place in Colombia. It will no doubt be seen in Colombia. The only films uh, you see in uh, Colombia are ones with Ricardo in them. You said that the dialogues are very precise. There's no scope for improvisation. I would like to ask about the characters as well. Did you imagine that the actor would play this part? Did you select him because Ricardo is a very well-known star throughout Latin America? Did you choose him to depict the sort of rage you have in Latin America faced with corruption and all these abuses? Was it a deliberate choice? Did you feel that Ricardo could really uh, play that character incredibly well? Okay. We all in Latin America have to cope with these abuses of power, whatever the country. It wasn't just by chance. I'd like to say that I started thinking about the actors when I was writing the film, but not in a very detailed way. I wasn't quite sure who the final actors would be. There was a casting process which took quite a long time, together with the uh, producers and the whole team, the crew. We imagined the film with a lot of possible faces. For me, uh, we have the best actors in Argentina in our cast. Uh, the people you have seen, we felt, are the best. These are people who really embody the characters in an optimal way. This um, film comprises a lot of small characters as well. That's part and parcel of the drama that I build up in the film. Of course, there were cases where there were more than one possibility. 
There's some people I wanted to uh, work with, but I didn't know which character uh, he or she should portray. Of course, I felt that all the actors could uh, add to the characters, lend relief, lend substance to the script. And well, it's not that people could choose freely, but yes, yes. In fact, I listened carefully to everything that people had to say to me. Did people quarrel over the same character? No. Okay, I'm afraid we now have to wind up. I'd like to thank you very much, uh, and I'd like to thank uh, all those for attending this press conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Que a veces eh, a veces pasa que el argentino usa algunas palabras en brasilero eh, es como un como un toque cool como un toque cool